Sweden's proposal to integrate the Rolls-Royce EJ230 engine, a derivative of the EJ200 used in the Eurofighter Typhoon, into the Saab JAS-39 Gripen EF represents a bold strategic maneuver to enhance the fighter jet's global appeal and reduce reliance on US-made General Electric engines. As of April 2025, this initiative is driven by the need to navigate U.S. export restrictions that have blocked Gripen sales to countries like Colombia and to capitalize on emerging opportunities in markets such as Canada, Peru, and potentially Ukraine. The Gripen, powered by the GE-derived Volvo RM12 on Gripen CD and GE F44G on Gripen EF, relies on 30% U.S. sourced components, making it vulnerable to Washington's vetoes. By offering a European engine, Sweden aims to bolster its defense industry's autonomy, appeal to nations wary of U.S. influence, and strengthen its position within NATO and global arms markets. This proposal, though not new, having been explored in the late 1990s, gains urgency amid geopolitical shifts, Sweden's recent NATO membership, and growing demand for affordable, non-U.S. aligned fighter jets. The strategic context is clear. Sweden seeks to leverage its neutral heritage and engineering prowess to secure high-value export contracts, such as Peru's $2 billion deal for 12 Gripen EF jets and Canada's re-evaluation of its F-35 commitment, while fostering deeper ties with European partners like the UK and Italy, key stakeholders in the EJ200 program. The proposal centers on integrating the EJ-230, which delivers approximately 90 kilonewton of thrust with afterburner, comparable to the F-44G's 98 kilonewton, into the Gripen EF. Saab, potentially in collaboration with Rolls-Royce and Volvo Aero, would adapt the airframe, avionics, and software to accommodate the engine, a process requiring significant engineering but offering strategic flexibility. The EJ230's higher pressure ratio fan and potential thrust vectoring capabilities could enhance the Gripen's maneuverability, making it competitive against rivals like the F-16V and Rafale. Key markets include Canada, where Saab proposes local production in Montreal to create jobs and reduce U.S. dependency, Peru, eyeing a $2 billion contract to modernize its air force, Colombia, where a $3.65 billion deal for 16 Gripens is at risk due to U.S. engine export vetoes, and Ukraine, where discussions since 2023 explore Gripen supplies to counter Russian aggression. The EJ-230 would be produced by Eurojet Turbo GmbH, comprising Rolls-Royce, MTU Aero Engines, ITP, and Fiat, with potential for Volvo Aero to join, as proposed in 1998. Social media discussions on X suggest Saab has been working steadily with Rolls-Royce, though no official statements from Saab or the Swedish government confirm active development as of April 2025. Despite its promise, the proposal faces formidable technical and political challenges. Technically, integrating the EJ230 requires redesigning the Gripen's air intakes, engine mounts, and avionics, a costly and time-intensive process. The EJ200, designed for twin-engine aircraft like the Eurofighter, must be certified for single-engine use, demanding rigorous safety and reliability testing. A 2019 Volvo Aero statement highlighted that EJ200 integration would require major reconstruction and is not optimized for single-engine fighters, underscoring the engineering hurdle. Performance trade-offs are another concern. While the EJ230 offers comparable thrust, it may not significantly outperform the proven F414G, and its single-engine adaptation remains untested. Costs could erode the Gripen's affordability advantage, with unit prices ranging from $85 million to $228 million, especially if export orders fail to materialize. Politically, the proposal risks straining relations with the U.S., a key NATO ally supplying critical Gripen components. Replacing G engines could provoke retaliatory measures such as tighter export controls or reduced cooperation on other defense projects. Coordination with Eurojet's European partners may also face bureaucratic delays, particularly if Sweden seeks favorable terms for Volvo Aero. 
Additionally, existing Gripen operators like Brazil, reliant on F44G engines, may resist a switch, complicating logistics for new buyers like Peru or Colombia. User support for the EJ230 proposal is evident, particularly on platforms like X, where enthusiasts praise its potential to free Sweden from GE's grip. Commentators highlight its appeal for Canada, citing local production and strategic autonomy, and credit U.S. export policies for pushing Sweden toward Rolls-Royce. Saab CEO Mikkel Johansson has voiced optimism about Gripen exports, indirectly endorsing engine diversification to secure deals. The Swedish government's push for parliamentary approval of Peru's sale suggests openness to such flexibility. However, feasibility remains uncertain. Technically, the EJ230 is viable, as demonstrated by 1998 proposals for a 700-hour flight test program, but high costs deterred progress then, and could again. Economically, the proposal hinges on major contracts. Canada's shift from F-35s or Peru's $2 billion deal could justify investment, but smaller markets like Colombia may not. Politically, Sweden must navigate U.S. sensitivities and Eurojet dynamics, leveraging its NATO status to secure cooperation. As of April 2025, no concrete evidence of active EJ-30 integration exists, with ex-posts and cited YouTube videos lacking authoritative backing, and a 2019 Volvo Aero denial of EJ-200 plans urging caution. The implications of a successful EJ-230 integration are profound for Sweden and its stakeholders. For Sweden, it could galvanize Saab's export market share, sustaining its $4.2 billion investment in 60 green e-jets and reinforcing its defense industry. Reducing U.S. dependency aligns with Sweden's neutral heritage and NATO role, enhancing its appeal as a supplier to non-aligned nations. Within NATO, a European engine strengthens ties with Eurojet partners, supporting joint projects like the Future Fighter System. However, failure to secure contracts or mismanaging U.S. relations could strain Saab's finances and Sweden's defense budget. For partners, the benefits are equally significant. Canada could bolster its Arctic defense and aerospace sector through local production, though it risks U.S. backlash. Peru and Colombia gain strategic flexibility, potentially forming a Latin American Gripen network with Brazil, but face delays if integration falters. Eurojet could see renewed demand for the EJ200, revitalizing the program, while Ukraine might benefit from a non-US controlled supply chain, though funding remains a barrier. Globally, an EJ230 powered Gripen could challenge US dominance in the lightweight fighter market pressuring GE and Lockheed Martin, but may prompt stricter U.S. export controls, escalating competition.